Hey, Robin here from Parenting for Connection. Okay, video number two, number two of three on what the heck is help it, happening with your child in the middle of a meltdown. So yesterday I talked about the fact that our kids in the middle of a meltdown are just trying to get a need met, regardless of how we feel about it, right? And I reviewed the eight core basic human needs of a child. So can you see that when our kids are getting their needs met, that they're gonna be more calm and more relaxed and happier and more willing to cooperate? And if they're not getting their needs met, they're gonna be stressed and they're gonna be frustrated and uncomfortable and angry and probably not willing to cooperate like we would like them to. So it's really in our best interest that we do everything we can to help get our kids' needs met. Now, of course we can't always meet their needs. And you know, let's say they're looking for independence and they wanna cross the street on their own or something that maybe has some danger attached to it. Well, we can't allow them to because it's not safe. And in that case, we would want to show up with our child with empathy. We'd wanna say, hey, you know what? I know that's so frustrating and it doesn't seem fair, but I'm doing this because I wanna keep you safe. Something like that. You wanna just show up with empathy. So let's switch gears now. I promised you that I would talk about the brain and here's why I talk about the brain. The reason is, is that the more we understand about the brain, the more peaceful we can peacefully we can parent. So. I'm gonna take the complex brain and I'm gonna break it down into three main areas. And you'll understand what I mean about being able to more peacefully parent the more we know about the brain. So the first area is the lower area of the brain and that includes the brain stem and cerebellum. And that is where um, all of our survival instincts live. So this is fight, flight, or freeze. This is also circulation and breathing, all that kind of stuff. And our, uh, as babies, we're born with um, this area of the brain almost fully developed. The next area of the brain is the middle area of the brain. And this is where we have the amygdala. If you know anything about the amygdala, you know that this is all about emotion and feelings feelings and more feelings. This is all about feelings. So when we learn about this area of the brain, we find that kids from birth to the age of seven are living in their emotional brain. They're living in their middle brain. So when you see meltdowns and tantrums and crying and frustration and all this big emotions from our kids, they're just acting their age. Isn't that so helpful to know? And it isn't until the age of seven that they start developmentally um, having a growth spurt in their higher area of the brain, which houses all the good stuff. And that is decision-making and compassion and empathy and uh, rational thought. How many times in the middle of a meltdown have we said to our kids, use your words, use your words, or tell me what's going on, tell me what's going on. No, don't do that because they literally don't have access to that part of their brain. They don't have access to their higher brain in the middle of a meltdown. They are living in that middle brain. So important to know, right? So if tantrums are all about our kids living in the middle brain, what happens when we have a meltdown? Where do you think we are? We're in our middle brain too. And that means we don't have access to our higher brain as well, which means that we sometimes get irrational displays of emotions from us and our kids, and it makes perfect sense. So I'm gonna show you with my hand what it kind of looks like in our brain. So if you take my hand here and you look at it like this, this is the brain stem and cerebellum, okay? This right here is the amygdala, and this is the higher brain, the, the prefrontal cortex and the uh, frontal lobes. So what happens is we get emotions rising up through our lower brain into our middle brain, and this is what starts to happen. This starts to vibrate right here. And what happens is, as it starts to vibrate and we get angry, we do this. We flip our lid. So I'm gonna tell you about flipping our lid in a minute. but. This means this actually, the higher brain regulates the, um, the um, amygdala and actually the more, the more frustrated and angry we get, the further and further away 
we get from regulation, the further and further away we get from rational thought and empathy and compassion. So it's no wonder why we kind of act crazy sometimes and the same is with our kids. So I hope that that really helps you to understand that it doesn't make any sense to go to your child in the middle of a meltdown and try to talk them out of it or talk them through it. And the same goes for you. When you are in your middle brain, it doesn't make any sense to go and try to talk it out with your child. So this is what you do. You wait. You wait until you're in your higher brain. You wait until your child's in their higher brain. And that is, that is maybe an hour later or a day later. And, and I gotta tell you, that's something that I learned uh, when I was learning to be a peaceful parent, that not everything has to be handled in the moment. Isn't that helpful too? So I hope you found this video really helpful. Remember the lower, middle, and higher brain, we wanna parent from our higher brain, not our middle brain, not when we're fully emotional. So I'm gonna to talk to you in the next video about how to hold space for your child in the middle of a meltdown. See you next time.